context, whether it's about computers or whether it's about people, all those things matter. And in trying to do this work, that's part of what I've been trying to assess, is to identify what it means for you, how does that relate to a larger group or a larger cluster of ideas. And it's been complicated, it's been complex, and you're asking a very good question. How you define hacker gets at the point of what is it exactly that's going on. If women don't define hacking in a malicious context, but have another term for it, then what are they doing? Do they define themselves as such and otherwise? So that's essentially the process that I've been going through. In doing my research, there were very few women. So I've tried to identify some, tried to ask specific questions, not only of, of women, but of men. So it's a curious question. Do they experience things differently? What happens in the context of becoming a hacker, however you define it? What happens when you're involved in hacker culture? Do you experience things in a negative way? Are you harassed more if you are a woman? Are you given some sort of automatic bias that, oh, hey, you've got boobs, you can't know what you're doing? Something like God that. God forbid, right? once I dive my hair blonde. So, yeah. <laughs> so, there's interesting questions that we can ask. And <clears throat> when we think about it, based on computer science, that kind of thing, when we consider what's going on, the number of women who are pursuing computer science or technical degrees is relatively small. It's grown a little bit, and we're talking like 25%, something like that. It's still a very small proportion of the total number of individuals seeking degrees. So it's small, and in fact it had a decline at some point into the late 90s and early 2000s. It's starting to grow a little bit, but at the outset there's automatically some sort of a variation in terms of the number of people participating. Furthermore, women are getting involved in technical occupations. But, there is some very, very interesting variation here. For example, how many of you could guess the number of women who are dental hygienists? What's the percentage of women who are in that field? 80%. 80%? 95%. 95%? Ratchet it up a little bit more than that. That's 97 and a half or something. It's right That's around 97, far. 98, 99, depending on the years. So, that is a field dominated by women. But, turn. <laughs> so yeah, imagine being a man and trying to get in that racket. What kinds of obstacles would you face? That's the same kind of thing we're just turning it on its ear. What's happening to women who are trying to get into this relatively, at least from what we understand, as being a male-dominated field? But look, look, look both of those examples here. Would the, the flack come from the, uh, say, if I wanted to go into you know, high genesis? Would the black come from the women in the field, or would it come from my buds <laughs> making fun of me as opposed to in the hacker community? You know, where's the black coming from? Is it coming from my girlfriends? Is it coming from? Right. The, you know, right, and that's a very valid question. Right? If you think about it, are the women who get into hacking, are they going to experience differential treatment by their friends, by their peer group? So I work in the healthcare industry, and when I'm on site, I see very few male nurses, for example. And I always like to talk to them about you know, their minority role in a very female-dominated industry. And they are not all gay. That's the opposite. It is the opposite. They're, and they're dirty, flirty. They're dirty, flirty. They're, yeah. And I don't, like, I don't like to stereotype. I don't like to overgeneralize. But the major, I would say 90% of the male nurses that I have met one of the reasons they chose that field it's was access to chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody seen Kill Bill? <laughs> My name is Buck. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, part of it may be institutionalized too. I mean, we, it, it gets to the point where so it, it's been so dominated by men for so long that when someone, for example, someone IMs you with a with a with a screen name or something like that that you can't see, you just assume that they're male. So a big part of that is assumption. It's institutionalized. So. Like because, when you hear the word nurse, you think, what? Right, right. So 97% of dental hygienists are female. So when you go to buy dental hygienist equipment, how much of that is geared toward women since that's the predominant market to begin with? Little tiny hands. I can count my number of female hacker friends that I have. Because I have a lot of hands. Okay. So there are a very small percentage of your total overall friendship group. That is the number of women hackers who are friendly. Okay. Is that just because you don't get along with other women? <laughs> What about what about the men in your in your friendship group? 
most of my friends are male. Okay. In and out of the group, most of my friends are male. Okay. There are four girls in my networking department. You were talking earlier about. Oh, sorry. You were talking earlier about how um, there's maybe harassment or or grief that people of uh, opposite gender take when they go on a gender dominated field. But how much of that harassment is is uh, fear of being harassed versus actual harassment? So you're asking how many women are just how thinking many, it's going to happen versus how often it happens? If you could pose the question to the women in the audience, who, have, who has been harassed or has felt like they've been treated differently because of this? IRC. IRC, definitely. Chicks gate things up. You know how many times I've heard that? We don't want we don't want chicks in our party. You know, everyone's okay with Al. I'm gonna gay things up. Right. I don't think a lot of chicks would gay. I'm actually trying to sodomize them, but she's gonna gay it up. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just gonna. Yeah, You're getting your exercise. Yeah. We'll make you into one of those skinny hackers yet. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that, Al. <laughs> but you know, you saying that it's, it's it's generalized and you know it's mostly male. We have to kind of look at it. Who's got the job back in the fifties? I mean, and before that, thousands of years, males. I had to say that, and I might be shot down because I am a male. You know, but it's the truth, and you, you I mean, you, you can only face it. You can't deny the history that males have always been more dominant in history than females. And he takes out the code. <laughs> but I mean, that's what I'm saying. You, know, you just can't generalize, and you have to look at that before you just start shooting on the males. Ayo, and it's kind of just how humans are. We're traditionalized. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with changing it. Right. Amen. Yeah, I'm not saying there yeah. is. And that's and that's part of it. Is that I'm not here to necessarily say there's something wrong with what's going on. That hacker culture is somehow unfair and needs to be completely changed. That there is some tacit issue at play that you all need to resolve. Rather, just what is the issue on the surface? So you're like Fox News, completely unbiased. You just report and we decide. Exactly. And, <laughs> and I, I mean that in the most honest sense of the word. I can just present you with the ideas that have been thrown out there. If we think about the fields themselves, traditionally male dominated, if you think about the number of women who are currently employed as computer scientists, there's some variation here. Three out of ten, computer systems analysts. Very small percentage. They're even making less money than men. If we look at a very handy dandy chart here, this is the number of employed computer systems analysts, male versus female. So that's quite an interesting and broad gap, especially towards the end. So there's something at play. Obviously, the number of women are increasing. Great. So is the number of men. So that means women are getting into this career at least a little bit more often. I think maybe you're kind of ignoring a few factors as to why these women are paid less than men. Now I'll give you an example. I spoke with a woman, young woman a couple years ago at Hope who turned their women in hacking uh, form kind of sort into male bashing. And one of her problems was she knew she was getting paid less than her male coworkers. And I asked her, when you were offered the position, did you negotiate for your salary, or did you just take what was offered? And that pretty much ended the conversation there. There may be other factors to this than just, well, you know, you're a woman and you can't do what a man can do. Most guys here, you know, if you say that, they're going to laugh at you. Um, you know, so I think, and you also need to look at, do women expect this kind of harassment when you step into this field. In other words, you know, Heather here, I have known her for a while. She's you know, kind of high strung about stuff. She's going piss her off. Well, that's so, because I walked into workplaces to apply for a job, and I knew that there was no women that worked there, and I applied, and I watched. As I walked out the door, the guy filed my resume right in the circular file on the floor, right in the garbage can. Didn't even look at it, just plunked it in. But do you expect that everywhere you go? I've had it at three different places. 
And you expect that every place you go. Okay, so based on history, yes. You think it's because you're a woman, or because you thought you sucked? I asked. I asked the guy once, and he said he did not want a woman in the workplace because it would screw up the all-male factor. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, 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 well, so I say that's. So there you go. There's something, something going on. Now, I'm not really so much concerned with how much money are people making. Why is there a difference in, in salary? But it's just well, something a, to draw attention to. Saying when, when so. Belong in technology. What were you going to say? I had him fired. Yeah. yeah. I, I noticed that uh, I go into a lot of different environments. <laughs> I, I noticed that if it's a stable environment, there's a lot more women there than if it's a very volatile environment. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, you kind of it, but if it's a, if it's a very competitive situation, then there tends to be a lot more males. But if you go something like, a, like a, a, a clothing store or something like that, where they have mean frames or something like that, you'll see a lot more women. And, and I actually enjoy working with women in the field better than because they're, they're, no, I mean, seriously, they're not, they're not, uh, it's, they don't have such so machines and things like that. But I think if the, if, if in a fast pace, with moving environment where there's a lot of risk taking, you're not going to find women versus a place where, you know, I've been working on a mean frame for 30 years, you're going to see a lot more women in that situation. So I think what becomes readily apparent as we're going through this stuff is that there are a fire hydrant man. <laughs> is that this is something that has a strong opinion base on one side or the other. Everybody knows something about it. Everybody's got something to say, and that's great. I've been going to forums for a little while now. I've been looking all over the place. These discussions are rare, and when they come up, it is very much like uncapping a fire hydrant. People get very pissed off very easily, whether they're on one side or the other, because everybody's got an opinion. And we all know the old saying about opinion sometimes. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that there is some kind of a variation present in terms of employment, in terms of the number of women who are pursuing these degrees in the first place. When we take that and apply it specifically towards hacking, makes sense that, you know, okay, maybe there's less women pursuing computer science degrees. Do you need a computer science degree to become a hacker? No. No. Do you need any kind of formal training? No, not really. So then, by that logic, by that definition, even if you're, even if the way that you define hacking involves nothing malicious, is simply, I want to understand how this box works at its most basic level, then at that rate, you don't need any kind of degree. You could be a woman just as easily as a man and get into this. When we look at the academic research on computer hackers, and even some of the media research by reporters, the computer underground, for whatever reason, is male-dominated. In fact, there are some authors from my line of research, sociology and criminology, that say that male dominance is a key component of hacker culture. If you want to try to break it down to its most specific levels, like what is hacking all about? Is it about knowledge? Is it about there's some kind of problem? Yeah. yeah. Did you guys hear me at all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, Keep just bellow. That'll work. Well, then fine. So, <laughs> screw the mic. At that rate, if it's male dominant, if, as one researcher put it, puts it, hacker culture is like boy culture, where everybody is out there to beat on one another, to say, look how strong I am, look how tough I am, then maybe that's why women are not involved. Could be. When you look at reporters who are trying to understand this issue, very few women have been identified. When they are, it's not hard and fast numbers. As one guy put it, Bruce Sterling, those of you who have read The Hacker Crackdown, his discussion or comment was that hacking is a teenage male voyeur thrill power trip activity. You don't find female computer intruders any more than you would find female voyeurs who are obsessed with catching glimpses of men's underwear. Okay. So that's one person's opinion. If we can't find hard and fast numbers about women, there are a few that say they're growing and they're on the white hat side. Okay, where's the hard proof? If we ask the question, who are the well-known hackers? Throw out some names. Susan Thunder. Mitnick. Susan Thunder. Excellent example. Hooper. Who is Susan Thunder? Excellent. The one who brought down Kevin Mitnick. <laughs> the one who brought down Mitnick. And yes, apparently she was a prostitute at one point in her life. Now she's a professional gambler. At many points. Okay. Who knows who Carmen Karanzik is? Or pardon me, Karasik. 
I'll let everybody else go because I know. <laughs> 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 anybody? Put my hand up. Let's not go ahead. Another famous female hacker. But she was later on, well after Susan Thunder, maybe about eight years, seven years. Do you remember what she did? No, I don't remember exactly. Anybody heard of Floodnet? <clears throat> no? Anybody heard about the Zapatistas attacking government systems, putting up messages about human rights? Huh. Yes. Okay. She created a tool along with the Electronic Disturbance Theater, if I'm quoting her name correctly, and their whole mission was to try to develop tools to help along human rights and sort of artistic <laughs> applications of technology. That's what they called it. They called it uh, arti something artistic, uh, the what? Something art, give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, something art was called, uh, not conservative art, it was called I don't contemporary. Remember. Something along those lines. I'm stumped, but I, I'm on it. Something along those lines. It's called contemporary art. Contemporary art. Something along those lines. Contemporary art. Yeah, something along those lines, yes. And in fact, much of what they did could probably be considered illegal. However, she says this was not hacking, this was art. This right, she defaced their websites, is what she did. And then when they tried to prosecute, she said she wasn't defacing it, it was contemporary art. <laughs> so, very interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Linux chicks. Anybody, anybody involved in Linux chicks? Debian is easy. Open source. What do you mean by in? In, yeah. Okay. Is anybody involved with a Linux chicks group? Anybody even heard of Linux chicks before? Raise your hand if you have. Okay. How many of you are running Linux in one capacity or another? All right, well, there you go. That makes play part of it. We tried to have a lunch. Service and Debian. But we got ruled out. Why did it get ruled out? Because the guys took it over and became the Penn College Linux Club. And it's there is one female member out of 113 guys. So, in a way, women got pushed out of even being involved in something like this. Okay. I turned around and made my... I, I came up with a DEF CON group for my area. Now see, that's a very interesting point, because even in the open source community, there are people who argue that it is very gender biased, emphasizing males to the point where some women are being pushed out. I took a look at the number of females heading DEF CON groups. There's four of them, and I'm one of them. Nice. Out of how many groups? So you are very much in a minority. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. I can't walk up to someone and say, yeah, just because you're a guy, you don't know more than I do here. You know, let's swap stuff. Let's talk about it. Can you not hear the problem? What, where, no, where's, where's the BSD girl? <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the BSD girl. Oh, the the girl. Devil. Oh, we're not oh, challenged. Oh, oh. We don't want to touch it. It was based off of the Betty page. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I was going to say, anybody running cervix? Cervix and Deviant are both named uh, from women. There you go. So. These are just three women, or at least two women in a uh, women's group. Now when you go online and you try to look up famous hackers, what are you invariably going to get? You're going to get Mitnick, you're going to get all those famous men throughout the line. There are very few women. When we ask the question, when academics at least ask the question, why are there so few women hackers? What is the gender gap all about? Some have suggested psychosexual theories, wherein Hacking is a way for young men, young boys, who are sort of socially inept, to dominate others, to penetrate something that they <laughs> And I realized, oh yeah, that's, that's really hilarious, but they're serious. There is an actual kind of notion that this is displacement for Whatever you're looking for. <laughs> is, is it true the number one uh, uh, classifications of sites that gets hacked are porn, or porn sites? I don't actually know in terms of sites that get hacked more often than others. I, I couldn't tell you. Because I'm told the BSD is, is the preferred uh, OS because it's very secure of uh, porn sites. And also porn sites are the number one hacked site out there. Well, I mean, if we think about porn, it'll be interesting to look at the results of that survey, since I do ask you all how often yeah. do you look at porn online. Um, when I ask this question to college students, I've done this so far with a sample of about 167. And it appears as though women are looking at it just as heavily as men yeah. at the high level. <laughs> now, that's not to say that women are just as often looking at porn as men, but at that top level where we're talking 10 or more times in the past period of time. 
women are just as heavily involved in that as men. At the lower levels where it's two or three or four or five, that's where it's more male oriented. But there's a few hardcore female porn freaks out there. I had to, I had to add an extra level. Terabytes. Terabytes. When we push it even further, this whole idea of hackers as being the, the nerdy, skinny, scrawny kid in front of the system. Anybody ever seen Undergrads and like that show? Oh man, bad example then. Right. Well, just think about any recent movie where there's been a computer hacker in it, like The Core, or uh, <laughs> yeah. or uh, what's that other one? Oh, yeah. The Italian Job. Now Seth Green plays a very nice, big, nerdy kid in there. So, that whole notion, that, that further perpetuation of the hacker is the guy who can't talk to anybody else but a system, then... If they can't get girls, they can knock a system. In fact, an attorney for an Igu Tenenbaum. Anybody know who Igu Tenenbaum is? No? This guy who was arrested for doing a number of different hacking jobs here in the U.S. He was an Israeli. And his attorney said, in the past we used to boast about the girls we had. Nowadays kids boast about their ability to hack computer systems. So there's, trying, there's individuals who are trying to link this whole notion of dominance to sexual domination of a system. Whether or not this is effective is hard to say because nobody's actually tried to test these theories out, or at least the validity of a sexual, sexual theory of hacking. So then would we assume that women who are hackers are sexually dominant women? Uh, yes, and that's why just Susan, throwing that out there. That's why she's you know? under turned in Kevin Mendick because Louis Depain refused to sleep with her. Right. So right. she turned him in because of that. So yes, yeah, she was a very dominant. Yeah. Person. Now that's a very, very good question. And that's part of why I'm here, is because you all, as individuals involved in hacker culture to one extent or another, are the ones who are at the ground level experiencing this. You're the ones who can generate the best kinds of questions. We academics who are separated from it, whether by default or our desire to get in being shut out, we don't necessarily know. We can sit up here in our ivory tower, if you like that example, and pontificate all day about what's really going on. You with whether, fancy words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like them five dollar words. But whether that's actually the case or not is entirely a question. We talk about gender role socialization wherein there are certain roles that women are expected to fill relative to men. Some people argue that technology as a whole is male dominant. It's cold. It's analytical. It requires skill to be operated and nothing else. There's no emotion at play. When we think about men, at least when theorists talk about men, the things that come into play are confidence, assertiveness, dominance. All of what you have to do in some cases to make a system work. We would argue, on the other hand, that women are more sensitive, more emotional, the matronly or motherly instincts. That's what some people would argue. So as a consequence, researchers argue that women, if they're going to hack, are going to have different skill sets. Maybe they're going to be white hats versus black hats. Maybe there's going to be hard mastery versus soft mastery. Anybody ever read the work of Sherry Turkle? No? Okay. Turkle suggests that men are going to be involved in hard dominance, or hard mastery, where it's imposition of will after a planned strategy, more or less like hammering a nail into a wall. You could use a sledgehammer, or you could use a tack hammer. One way or the other, you're getting that damn nail in the wall. <laughs> Women, on the other hand, are going to be more involved in sort of free-form activities, more open discussion and ways to figure out how to do something. How many of you, since most of you are men, would say, yes, I'm very much a hard mastery kind of person. It's all about getting that thing in there, one way or the other. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about sex. No. That's all I'm Never mind. <laughs> but you really can't do anything, because there definitely is, just like that, there definitely is an impact between the one and the other. Just like that says, especially starting off early 80s, where it wasn't as socially acceptable to be in the computers like it is today. So today, saying you're a hacker, even though you're dubbing it yourself, is supposed to promote yourself, push yourself up. People like that. Where back then, if you sat behind a computer all those hours a day trying to do things, 
you obviously didn't have the friends, so the computer was your friend. So that is definitely dead on accurate. Okay. So Turkle may have some relevance, but as time changes and technology becomes much more acceptable, as almost everybody's got a system, even where your younger brothers and sisters maybe are playing video games all the time. We know from statistics that the number of women gamers is increasing at all ages. So at the very least, that's a baseline sort of technology that's easy to access. If that's the case, then perhaps that potential technology barrier, the relevance of women not playing on a computer, whereas it may be more for your young boys, maybe that's going on. What are you going to say? Where I, where I work in, in doing what I do for a living, I'm an information security consultant. Both of those methods, though, are equally valid and acceptable ways of doing what we do. I know, you know, penetration testing, for example, you know, may take the specific bang your head on the wall attitude, where you just bang, bang, bang until you get in. Or, you know, there's there's also kind of the artistic finesse approach to things, but both are equally acceptable and both equally work. So I don't know that that would really in, encourage a gap in successfulness in genders, where I, I certainly agree that one is kind of geared more toward male, one tends to be geared more toward female. But I think in the, in the higher in the hierarchy of things, I don't think it really would make a stopping point. Now that's a very good point, because most of the men I've talked to have suggested that there is not one single way to do that. So I don't know that the hard mastery versus soft mastery is so relevant anymore, because you can very easily do one, the other, both, whatever it takes to get what you need to get done done. Now there are also structural arguments that have been posed. Essentially that women have had historically more difficult ways to get into the workplace. When they are in, they can very easily be forced out. Think about World War II. Who went into the factories when the men went overseas? Rosie. Rita the Riveter. Oh, was it Rosie? Rosie. 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 We can do it, by God. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. Once the men came back home, though, what happened to the women? Back, back in the kitchen. Yep. Yeah. Where they belong. Pregnant, barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now, that having been said, that's a very interesting point because if women were forced out of the factories once men were back, those kinds of opportunities dissipate. So there is variation in terms of the ways that women can get into these jobs. Underrepresentation in computer science, technology, all those jobs, if that persists, then if women are never in it, women are never in it. It's just kind of a long-term cycle. The reverse happened was the beginning of freaking. And whereas the phone company hired young males, college, coming out of high school, etc., they were pulling too many pranks. Women are more reliable, more secure. They so reversed it, and that's how phone operators became women instead of men. Right. And the so women dominates the phone industry. So that is an interesting point. And keep on Read on second. Um, I was just going to say, I think it all comes back to exposure and not in the dirt way. Um, you know, like um, Hoop was saying earlier, you know, we traditionally, historically, whatever, we, we didn't get the exposure, and more and more women are getting exposed to it. Like, you know, the only reason I got into 2600 was through a friend, a male friend, because I hang around with predominantly males, and I've told some of my female friends, you know, they tell six friends, they tell six, um, but I think slowly that that exposure will increase, and I think that's a really big part, is just hearing about it and figuring, like, I have an arts degree, you know, I I got a, I, I took sketching and I took all kinds of very right brain stuff all through school, but in the meantime, my roommate, my male roommate, had a computer, and I was a mutter, and um, a mutter? it's exposure, again, we're, old. we're not going to talk about <laughs> So exposure, and that right. may be something to think about, maybe in the future there's going to be somewhat less of a gender gap just at the outset, because the of the introduction to technology, okay? Now, these arguments haven't been proved out one way or the other. These are just the ideas that have been proffered. Now, when we think about women generally who have been involved in this, even the female researchers who have looked at the issue, they argue that they experience a lot of harassment. This is a post that was on uh, Bug Track and, can you remember where else now? Uh, InfoSecLists.org. Anybody know Starla Pureheart? Anybody heard that name before? Raise your hand if yes. Al, who is Starla Pierhart? <laughs> Recent Al, I there's no statute of limitations. I, don't say who you know. Don't say who you know. I can't say anything. That post was 2004, dude. All right. So anyway, Starla Pierhart is a white hat hacker. This post was made, and it is essentially I don't know if you can read it. 
At Bump Track Security Systems, we pride ourselves in having taken a keen eye for young and upcoming talent. Specifically, core members of our research and development team have expressed continuously growing feelings of affection towards your person. Or as one of our researchers put it, he, 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 I'd like to research and develop that all night long. <laughs> smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. What it boils down to is that we at BSS, Bug Track Security Systems, would like to offer you, Starla Pureheart, prolific warrior princess of the great nuke wars of 1997, <laughs> a position at Bug Track Security Systems, preferably on your knees. Oh. 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 Nice. All kidding aside, get in touch with us, Anna. We need a token femme. <laughs> That's a pretty big bird, right? I mean, if I saw something about that related to myself or my wife, I'd be livid. Any of the women in the room experienced something similar? Maybe not to this degree, but at least some form of harassment. Yes? Maybe? You ma'am in the way back? Kind of? Okay. I know there's another woman in the room. What about you, ma'am? No? Okay. So, maybe, this may be just a really good example. Yeah. Actually, I've got a story with that. Um, I had a guy who sent a harassing email to, well, it was to me and a bunch of my friends. Yeah, sorry about that, dude. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, he sent it harassing me directly, but it was from a Hotmail account. It so his pants. Well, he harassed not only me, but my girlfriend at the time. And it was just... It sounds like he's bi. Probably. The guy, it I wasn't me. Okay, so you experienced some form of harassment. Yeah. And of course, I use my skills to get even with him. But it was just the <laughs> same sort of like, it's the livid feeling like you really, I mean, just that sort of crap. It's so weird, annoying like, to deal with. Okay. So there's harassment. Maybe he experienced a little bit on both ends, but primarily, probably more directed at women. When we think about general yeah. harassment or sorts of objectification, anybody ever <laughs> bought the hack sewer tapes, the triple X porn I film, porn. or films? <laughs> If you were at DEF CON when these were released, there's you a whole lot of off. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a whole lot of arguments as to the quality, validity, and even well, other things about the people who are involved in it. So, are there any dudes in these videos? No. Is it all women? Yeah. We don't know that. I haven't Someone watched. Someone could be a Buffalo Bill and do a Trump under. You watched it? I haven't watched them. Okay. So it's all behemoth. <laughs> so there you go. So, I watched it, but I didn't pay for it. <laughs> so yeah, you probably burned. Yeah. On the flip side, uh, I think sometimes a problem is, I worked in a large help desk, and there was such a problem between boys and girls, and uh, uh, men and women, whatever you want, however you want to say it, that th what they would do is they would have female teams and male teams, and uh, like I remember one time I got into a lot of trouble, and it was. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a woman just did that. Yeah. That looks like your wife, dude. Thanks. But my, my boss's <laughs> name was, was Melanie, uh, and I spelled it with an O just because I can't spell. Melanie? Uh, yeah, oh. and, and I got into a truckload of trouble. And it, I mean, a guy would have just a like quit that trouble? sometime. What's that? Nothing. As in melons, Melanie. And also, <laughs> about 20 years ago, and, and I don't think that would be. Yeah, you know, it's something to stop, but I, I got into more trouble because I just couldn't freaking spell. It's not in the dictionary, you know. But anyhow, um, I have trouble with and this. also some years, like 20 years ago, uh, somebody said, give me a mouse pad. And I said, why do you have a female mouse? So I, I didn't realize there was a lady there. And she turned so red, her hands blushed. She could no longer work in that group. I didn't know she was there, but I mean, you know, it's like... It was, it was a stupid joke, but I mean, she she blushed to where she almost passed out. See, I, I, I like this. I like this. And this all comes back to women being overly sensitive. See, I just like to bring up and say, yeah, I need a mouse pad here for once or hold. What, what, what's your name now? <laughs> all right, so so there's stuff that happened. Okay, fire that. I should probably really push this along because I know there's another talk. So, what am I trying to do? Well, in the process of doing my research, I've been looking at about ten forums, all of them publicly accessible. So I've been doing searches, I've been taking information from them, drawing down threads, examining the threads, trying to understand what is the content. And when we specifically look at it to consider gender, either regarding girls or chicks or hacksaws or what have you, less than 1% of every thread, of all the posts, are really dealing with gender. 
So that tells us that perhaps this is not a significant issue on the surface. However, when it does come up, what is actually going on? Who's saying what? This first example is drawn from a forum, and this is what kind of got me thinking about the whole thing. A guy posted, how many girls did you meet who were really hackers? No one talks about it. Never seen some girl who knows a lot about computers and hacking. Is there some real reason for which girls, excuse me, is there some real, some girls which are hacking? They have very bad English. If they're spelling errors, they're not mine. These are directly from the threats, so pardon me. This guy Irv said, I've only seen one girl that could be considered a hacker in an old school I used to go with. She would be in there with the geeks messing around on the router. She was hot, too. <laughs> and guy says, unfortunately, I've not met any hacker chicks. The only ones I know about exist in the movies. Then a woman comes on and says, I am a female hacker, and I know only a few of other female hackers. There really isn't that many that I know of. So... Somebody comes along and says, pokes and pokes away. <laughs> then she says, pokes and stole, she pokes stole back. And then another guy says, I love it when kids flirt via the internet. Is that we just poke them both? <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we, if we accept that this is actually a person being honest about their gender and saying, yes, I am a woman, what happens? In this context, it leads to flirt. Okay, is that really what happens all the time? Well, in another forum, somebody said, I've been looking my whole computer life for a hacker chip. They have to exist. There has to be a way I can enjoy my two favorite things. What <laughs> happened? And I says, well, if you see girls as items in a package, I don't think you'll ever get one. Lyra is our only girl here, though I don't think she's the type for you. And then the girl actually comes on and says, it's my advice as a girl that you will never be happy if you aren't willing to compromise. What else? I know there have to be more girls on this forum somewhere. I'm going to start a poll. So this person riveted says, uh, sorry to inform you guys, but I am a chick here. A hideously tall, good-looking chick, but out of female anatomy nonetheless. <laughs> I didn't really think it mattered over the internet, but hey, since you're interested. So then the poster from earlier says, we're shocked that you're claiming to be a girl. Your posting convinced us otherwise. I've had that happen. You've had that happen? Okay. So what was the response? Yeah. When I started my death pen group, I had an email from him. He didn't know I was a chick until he met me. So there's a tacit assumption. Now he's dating me. <laughs> so a tacit assumption that you're dealing with a guy. How many of you in here, when you're online, assume who you are dealing with is a man, sort of by default? Hey. The either a man or the FBI. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> not by the way the text is, you kind of make an assumption. I need this guy. By the way they, the way they assert themselves online, the, the way they they talk, their okay. So there, there's various intelligence. Okay. Sometimes comes into play. It's like guys who play female characters in games. Ooh, a lot of the time, there are lots of tells Absolutely. that they. Yeah, you they, can tell that they're only doing yeah. it so they get free items or something. Right. Exactly. Not their chip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there are linguistic cues that maybe tell us about gender. <laughs> Interesting thing to consider. I don't know how many of you have ever actually thought about that. If there are some potential ways to consider who it is that you're dealing with. Now, on the one hand, does it even matter? No. No, not really. But when it does come up, there are odd reactions in some cases. There is some kind of an implicit, wait a minute, you're a dude? Or you're not a dude? What's going on? This kind of leads to an interesting series of posts from a different forum. Somebody was using this as their avatar. Anybody know who the penguin is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a penguin on that picture. <laughs> Sorry. It's way down at the bottom. Well, anyway. It's in her cervix. It's in her cervix. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get this back on track. So this is somebody's avatar. This is somebody's little picture. And so, somebody inevitably posts, Are you on your pick? Huh? Somebody says, are you on your pick? That's In other words, is that you? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you for translating that. <laughs> is that you? I knew what all those words meant. <laughs> Independently. <laughs> yeah, there's no kind of time together. Damn that lead speak. <laughs> all right, so somebody says, that's a relatively popular picture, and no, that's not him. <laughs> somebody else says, so what, are you a guy or a girl? I'm Aphrodite. And Both. Black comes along and says, sorry, I am a male. I know I just really like this girl on my pick, just like everybody else. Doesn't everybody? So, 
when something is up, maybe individuals may take that as a cue. If there's a girl picture, if it's kind of a femi name, maybe this is a girl. Does it change the way that they're interacting? Not necessarily, at least there's not a lot of strong evidence here. There's some flirting, there's some odd responses, but nobody is specifically flaming, oh, you're a girl, get the F out. Now, in a different thread from a different forum, a woman comes on and says, when I'm here, there's several things that bother me. There aren't that many females, and if they are, they don't make themselves known. Second, the one or two that post basically spam or just ask for opinions. I know that there are a lot of females out there who know their business and could make great contributions, and it saddens me that they don't. If you're a female, show that you know how to do more than play a game, spam, or ask opinions. Do something relevant. If you don't have any brains in your head, quit hiding them. So, very strong words from Yikes. a woman. In response, a couple of people jump on and say, there are a few women I know in real life that are very intelligent. No. <laughs> there does seem to be more truth to this, however. Most women are more concerned with emotional-based things rather than intellectual. That's why I think most geek men are avoided by mainstream women, reflecting some comments that have been made in here already. I've seen some very competent girls and some very incompetent girls. Same thing with the other sex. I don't think it really depends on the sex of the person. It's just that she's been particularly unlucky. So quality of posts is not necessarily gender specific, at least from this person's perspective. Another person says, stereotyping women into bubble-headed isn't going to help them, and don't think that you're special because you don't fit that profile. So just because you're not one of the people you're talking about, big whoop. There's a lot of very brilliant women. It's just that they choose not to post for antisocial reasons. Most women that are very good with computers choose to keep to themselves. Maybe, we don't know. This is just another person's opinion. I've never had any problems with guys in my work or online, but I guess I keep to myself and have very few male friends online. I don't go shouting, I'm a female, and write in pink. I'm often busy, too busy to chat in the forums, but I just felt I should reply to this. So this is another woman coming on and saying, hey, I don't make an issue of it. Just because I am a woman doesn't mean I, I post myself and cast myself in that image all the time. As you always demonstrated by the girly point motion. So, all of, your, all of your posts are always in pain. <laughs> in all caps, with lots of exclamation points. Yeah. <laughs> and smiley faces. So, that's some data from some forums. It demonstrates that something is in play, but not very often. <laughs> I've been interviewing hackers. We've got a sample of 15 people so far. The way I define hacker may be construed as being broad, but that is specifically to encapsulate both the criminal and the non-criminal hacker. The people who are interested and maybe just pen test their own systems, the people who are screwing around with their own hardware, the people who have a diversity of interests from freaking, software cracking, writing, programming, war driving, and individuals who get into systems with or without authorization. And to some extent, I do include people who post in web forums, if for no other reason than they are at the cursory edge of hacker culture and may have some insights. <laughs> so, yes, it's broad. Yes, this may not necessarily be the best definition, but when you are dealing with something that has no agreed upon definition, where there is individual variation dependent on criminal, non-criminal, I'm a black hat, I'm a white hat, I'm just a script kitty, I'm just a noob, I really suck, no, I'm a lamer, what have you. So I'm trying to come at this as broadly as possible. In the process of doing this, I have only been able to collect two interviews from women. The rest are all men. So the data that I'm going to present here are not representative of all women. This is just simply two case studies and a way to help reflect on what's going on. When we ask individuals, when I've gone to people and said, hey, when did you get an interest in computers? When did you get really involved in technology? The two women specifically got into it in their late teens, which is interesting by comparison to the men because they got in it much earlier, ages seven up to and including age 12, but there were some even as early as five and six years old. The variation in interest that really got them involved here. Women were more getting into it for the potential for communication, the ability to mud, the ability to talk to people through IRC or web forums. Men, however, were getting into it largely because of gaming, whether playing on their PC, whether trying to set up a LAN with their friends, even in some cases, for the much more nerdy of the sample, it was basic programming. So, there's some variation in terms of interest and age level. However, 
when we think about what's actually going on in terms of their friends, their social networks. Men and women both got further involved in tech and even got into hacking because of their friendship networks. The people that they know, as well as through the process of learning on their own, beginning to read online, checking out some books from the library, talking to that person they may know in a COBOL class or in a C class or in a Cisco class, depending on when you were going to school. So, that's something that men and women have in common. Also, men and women both are reporting generally low levels of friends who hack. You said earlier, how many friends do you have who are women that hack? Less than a handful? Four. Four? And how many men? I've lost count. Okay, so you have a large circle of friends who are hackers. Male. Is that a, when you think about all of your friendships, how many of those would you say are probably hacker related? At least 30. At least 30? 30 percent? No, 30 of them. 30 of them. Okay, so try to put it into a percentage if you can, if you don't mind. Over 50? Okay, so you're you are going against what so far is up here. That's great. I was an early chick in high school that got shoved in the closet all the time. Okay, so you've had some very, very different different experience. Okay, good. So there's more women in the room. How many of you women so far would say that more than half of your friends are hackers? How many are what? How many of the women in the room? I'm looking at twenty five percent right now. Twenty five percent. You ma'am. Ten. Ten? You in the way back? None? None? <laughs> How many of your friends are hackers? No. For women. You need friends to have friends that are hackers. Sorry about that. Okay. So, no. so it's a small percentage overall. Now there are some exceptions to this rule, and that's true of any. But generally speaking, women and men both have a smaller percentage of their total friendship networks that involve hackers. Another commonality. Both of the women, however, have attended at least 2,600 meetings, and one of them attended DEF CON regularly. A limited number of the men as well. Four of the 13 have gone to DEF CON or 2,600 meetings. So these are not necessarily huge numbers of people with large, pardon me, huge number of people with large social networks. Finally, both of the men, or pardon me, both of the women and a majority of the men, at least nine of them, work in IT. So there's at least a long-term interest in technology at play for both genders. A lot of things in common. What's interesting, though, is there is one specific differential. Men have been flamed. I'm sure all of you have probably gotten into one skirmish or another via IRC. Never, or or other. ever, ever. <laughs> Anybody ever been flamed or participated in a flame? How many of you have not? What if you are the flame? <laughs> so, some of the men, the women, however, are experiencing something very unique when it comes to the flaming that they get. Some of the channels are extremely anti-female. I've been kicked off of several. Another said, guys don't respect you, and if you complain about being harassed or bothered, the general response is, what did you expect? You're a girl. And they never defend you or ask the annoying guys to shut the fuck up. So, definitely some kind of gender experience. Got I got it. banned from a board for a week because I called the admin a dip because he said women don't hack an Xbox. Okay. Very, very good. Very demonstrating this whole point. I proved the admin wrong and he said, that's you're it, you're banned for a week. No woman will prove me wrong. Go on. Nice. Any other you had got a similar story? Did you no. hack your PS2? No. Did you use someone a PS2? I did it. Oh, you did it? Never mind. <laughs> Confuse you with Kerbal. So, you do. <laughs> there's some gender differentials here. As a consequence, the two women that were involved in the survey have concealed their gender at various points while online. One of them said, I always conceal my gender unless I'm on a channel with friends who I know won't hassle me because going online with a female Nick is asking for trouble. Another one said, I think that my dick is somewhat feminine, which is a red flag. A red flag for later trouble. Do you ever use a gender neutral name? My handle is Late Freak. Late Freak. So there's no real gender it's, it's, at all. It's kind of neutral. Most of the handles I've used throughout the past are pretty neutral. Okay. Actually, and is that because of this or just generally speaking? It's just whatever came up that was 
acceptable for the occasion, and I just, at this point, I, I don't know, I'm kind of speaking. Okay, so you found a handle that you like. Okay. You already got a name? Well, I'm a girl, and so my name is a girl's name, and screw everybody. Yeah, but you're, the first thing they think of is think Russian. They think of like a Russian guy. You hear that all the time. Yeah. You, the time. Yeah. you do hear that. Yeah. So it is kind of. Right, but most people. Right, away, they don't think of Russian. Yeah. 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 Ye
So uh, what's that going, what is it saying about general? No, I'm saying what are your observations as far as, because um, you can't use the internet and treat it as a global community, because we're really not the global community yet. We're still cultures right. who meet on the internet. <laughs> That's so, a good question. Lack of women in, in computer sciences, is that an American culture, or is that, how good is, question. what are the observations in other countries? Excellent one. And honestly, I, I can't speak to that. There has been very little looking at it internationally. I don't have a, an international sample to speak of. I can only talk about what I've collected thus far. And so to speculate any further would be really bad on my part. The only thing that I can say is that uh, the, there's one guy that I know of who's looking at it in Russia, and he hasn't really hit on that yet, that gender issue. So it may be present, but I really don't know the extant literature enough to, to speak to it. Yes, sir. Is it even important to look at a gender disparity in, in technology? Because that, to me, almost seems like looking at do more short, short people jog than tall people? What does it matter? What relevance does it have? Or is it just Americans are obsessed with oh, equality really? and we're obsessed with differences between us? And we look for that everywhere. Are there more women in art? Are there more gay people in this? Or are See, there more white people yeah. in style? No, I was I, 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 I believe that exactly. Concur with them exactly. If we spent less time counting Cheerios in the other bowl and more time figuring out if the, if we even want Cheerios in the fucking first yeah. place, <laughs> <laughs> we'd be in a lot better yeah. position. Now, now exactly. how, the real disparity is how come we care about technology and other people don't, but technology is in our lives. Now I can tell you exactly why I've gotten into this line of research, and it's a very specific reason as to why. And, keeps you in business. Well, yeah, it keeps me in business. But more to the point, in, in my girl, <laughs> I, I've no, got a I've got a perfect one right here. <laughs> what happens is that as criminologists, we look at all kinds of issues. One of the things that people look at is why is there variation in terms of men and women and crime patterns. Women commit property offenses versus violent offenses. The lion's share of homicides, etc., are all male, either male perp or male victim. There is some intergender violence and all that kind of stuff, but at a basic level we say, okay, women commit more property crime. Why is that? Why aren't they engaged in violence? When there is a spike or an increase and a concurrent one that happens over time that shows women are getting more involved in violence. Why are there now women gangs that are their own unique entity or affiliated with a male version of, say, the Bloods in your area? So there's a blood gang, a male blood gang, gang, girl. So why is that happening? What is going on? So essentially I got into this seeking to account for some of the variations that are present here as a consequence of what we look at much more broadly to understand how things work and why. There's very little of this and it's not so much to say, oh, male hackers bad, they beat on female hackers or anything else. It's just at a, at a baseline to understand what the differences are and what it tells us. How does this give us any insight into hacker culture? How does this highlight any kind of gender role socialization that occurs offline, mimicking itself online. And that's something that even at a most primary level is something that would be of interest to a social scientist. So that's kind of why I got into this. It's not so much anything other than we have this certain line of research in our field, what's going on in computer-based activities. So in our, the NC 2600 forum, there's a chick source. Yeah, right. But there's not a gay one. There's not a Jew one. Hey. Yes, there is. There's the one right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't, you don't get your own. You don't yes, get I do. Right? Every you single forum. I would, I would but, love to talk about, we well, talk about so dogs walking. Why should there have to be? <laughs> you know why? Because and, and not only that, but how many, tell you why. How many women in this room are stick together? No, I can tell you no, why. No, no, no. And how I many, can tell you why. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, Wait, man. Man. How many... How many women in this room have posted to it in the last three months? That's what it is. Because every other forum Zero. that isn't Chitzers is posted. You, you get Chitzers, nobody yeah. posted. Chitzers? Yeah. Really? I was just trying to <laughs> Right after someone said the forum was dead, and I said, well, now there's another one of us, and then someone said there was only three of us, I said, no, now there's four. I have a big And I never got a response. That. Okay, so there's, so you posted, sorry. Right. There was one post, and you, you and I were talking a little bit about this, how how no girls posted chip stars. It's that Wonder Woman computer you're using. You have it in invisible mode. Let me just kind of try to, to wrap this up. Yeah. 
as a whole, men and women have some similar experiences. Men and women define <laughs> hacker culture in some similar ways. The definition of hack, beliefs about hacking, okay, there's, there's some real parity there. Okay, great. Then yeah, what's the point? If they do share similar ideas, why bother looking at it? Because there is some variation in how they get involved, there's some variation in actual experience. Now with two women, I can't say that, oh yes, this is representative of every single one. I can't say that every single female hacker has experienced gender harassment online, and so, but still it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect their view. There may be some women out there who say, I am so pissed off and fed up with the way that people treat me online, screw hackers, I'm done with this crap. Maybe, maybe, you're right, I don't know. So you said that the, the women who are at least into hacking share the same point of view. Have you done any, any research on whether women in general, uh, as opposed to men, share the same view on, on hacking or, or things like that to see whether there's some predisposition before you know they're, they're involved in it? Or? To be honest with you, no. Um, and most of the research that's out there even on hacking doesn't take this tack. There's, um, these two researchers, Jordan and Taylor, they've tried to at least say, yes, we look at female hackers. Their discussion about female hacking, though, is extremely esoteric. Doesn't highlight their actual experience or opinions, but just says these very high-minded things about hacking turning into hacktivism, and so as a result, we're going to see more women involved in hacking because hacktivism is more female gender oriented. It's confusing stuff that doesn't really add up. So I, I can't really answer your question, unfortunately. I'm interested in, in things like, you know, like engineering and mathematics and science. I mean, you know, these are technical fields. Is, is there some difference, you know, in, in the way the female brain approaches these? Why they're less interested? Or, you know, are they less interested? Are they you know, less able? Are they more able? Are they just not given a chance? Um, have you ever looked at any parallels between that sort of research and what you're doing? What I've seen is uh, just at a, at a hard numbers level in terms of, say, engineering and mathematics. The number of women involved, at least at the college level, has increased. We haven't seen that concurrent increase in IT. So that may indicate something about some difference. Uh, in terms of women and getting involved in computer science and IT, there's research that's beginning to question it. Stanford did a study a couple of years ago, and there's a great quote about it. Uh, and why is it that there's this increase in these other fields, but not in this specific discipline? There's growing research. I just know a, a few things about it off, off the top of my head. And it doesn't necessarily tell us too much about hacking. So, I'm sorry, I don't have a real good answer for you. Okay. So, let me just kind of wrap this up here. There's clear demonstrations of harassment, but it's at a very low level. What are you going to ask? Parallels to this, say, studies about Citadel 